Hello everyone, welcome back. This is introduction part one. In this lecture, we'll discuss and introduce cloud computing. This is our agenda. What is cloud computing? Different deployments and models. Advantages, AWS suite with some analogy, virtualization in AWS, and then Zen hypervisor. What is cloud computing? Before giving away the definition of cloud computing, let me try to segregate the two underlying facets of the same. One portion is cloud and the other portion is computing. Before defining cloud computing, let us see some basic definition. What is internet or intranet? If you are using this computer or sorry, if you are using your computer and internet connection to watch this course, then you know what internet is. Internet does not need any introduction without which our lives would be totally different. So this is the technical definition. A global computer network using standardized communication protocols, for example, UDP, TCP, IP, providing information and communication facilities consisting of interconnected networks. So we have a global network. There are thousands of routers provided by multiple internet service providers and we have billions of devices. Each are connected to each other using this global network. If I send a WhatsApp, WhatsApp message to you, I'm essentially using internet. Then what is inter intranet? Internet is same, but within the same network. For example, you might have multiple devices behind your router, like your laptop, desktop, one or more smartphones, tablets, etc. If you're using Wi-Fi router to connect to internet from these devices, then all these devices are said to be in LAN or local area network. They do not need internet to talk to each other as a communication can happen via the router, then these devices are said to be using intranet. Internet is a local private network created using World Wide Web. We'll see intranet in much more detail later on. Okay, so why am I talking about intranet or internet all of a sudden in a session of cloud computing? Remember the first facet, cloud. Well, cloud is nothing but a fancy name of internet or intranet. As long as there is network and connectivity, we are in cloud. It might surprise you, but yes, that is the definition of cloud. Cloud is actually internet or intranet. So one definition down, let's define computing now. When we say computing, a picture of computer comes in our mind. Computer contains CPU, RAM, hard disk, operating system, maybe Windows, Mac or Linux. But compute actually means CPU and RAM and the other components in a computer's motherboard. In enterprise or corporate environment, when you say like server, we mean both compute and storage. But actually a server contains only the compute environment, CPU and RAM. I'll stick to CPU and RAM for the moment to define compute. Before going, going into compute further, let's introduce virtualization. Suppose you have a Mac OS and you need Windows operating system to do some of your work. You have two options. First, the easy one, buy a Windows laptop. But think for a moment, you will not use either of the machines all the time, right? Some of the times you'll use your Mac uh, OS or Mac laptop and Windows laptop in, in, in other times. Then what is the point of spending so much money in buying a new system? What is the second option then? Welcome to the virtualized world. Now, what you can do is install something called VMware in your Mac OS and then install Windows on top of VMware. If you log into Windows, it'll feel like you're using a separate machine altogether. But actually, you are not. The Windows OS will get its own RAM and CPU. But that will be borrowed from the virtual Mac machine. From this one. The Windows OS it get, will get its own RAM but and CPU, but as I said, it will be borrowed from the Mac machine underneath. Now we say that this Windows OS, OS has been installed as a virtual machine. The reason it is virtual is obvi obvious as it uses virtual CPU and RAM borrowed from the host OS, in this case Mac OS. VMware, which is used to install Windows OS, 
on top of it is also called hypervisor hypervisor is a technology that is used to create virtualized environment in our case we have virtualized cpu ram and storage as well storage because this windows os we need to store the operating system itself along with data so virtualization is the creation of a virtual version of something such as operating system server storage device or network resources you see server os network resources storage everything can be virtualized now if you see here we have saved ourselves buying a new computer or laptop by just creating this virtualized environment we'll discuss virtualization concepts in much more detail when we come across it again in later tutorials but think about the think of the money you have saved you did not have to buy another laptop you are using the same machine and you are using two two operating systems basically you have saved half of your money by now you might have guessed that cloud computing uses virtualized technologies so that enormous amount of compute environment can be created with lesser cost so the compute portion of the cloud computing is actually virtualized compute environment however however it goes beyond only compute as we'll see in due time let's define cloud computing now if you take the virtualization virtualized environment which you just created in the previous slide as a windows os on macintosh operating system using vmware and put it over internet and allow users to access the windows os remotely from their machine well congrats you have you have essentially created a cloud computing environment so if you ask me an one liner definition this is how this is how i would define cloud computing so cloud computing is virtualized compute environment over internet or intranet why intranet we'll come back to that so cloud computing is equals to virtualization plus internet it's a combination of both now different models and deployments so cloud service models we mainly have three types of service models infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service so infrastructure as a service we have aws rackspace microsoft azure google cloud platform ibm bluemix etc in platform as a service we have aws as elastic beanstalk heroku openstack and then software as a service we have google drive google docs microsoft office 365 etc see that as a service this one the last one eas we have been using this as a service for for a long time now before going into technical let me try to describe it using an example which you can relate easily suppose you want to eat pizza you have two options of course first option you know go to a restaurant order a pizza eat and pay for it in this case you are using as a service in our case this would be food as a service because you are not only buying the product you are getting served as well what is the second option cook it yourself to cook pizza you need multiple things you need kitchen utensils then you'll need vegetables then you'll cook and get your final product which is pizza and of course you have to eat it right if you see here we need multiple things to get our end product the kitchen utensils which are which, which was talking about is part of infrastructure the vegetables and etc is part of platform then we have cooking and finally our product now if you plan to cook yourself and you if you are in a new place you have to invest a lot of money buying infrastructure then buying platform and then you have to cook yourself and then consume it finally let's talk a little different suppose you are a person who wants to buy your own stuff like vegetables and cook it yourself but you do not want to invest on infrastructure or key key in utensils of course i mean you are in a new place it don't make any sense that you buy uh, you know infrastructure every time you go to a new place what you can do is go to a hotel book a suite and use their kitchen to cook pizza so all these things will be provided to you by the hotel provider what you have to do is you have to use on you have to buy only vegetables you have to buy and pick your own vegetables and then 
and cook your pizza then in, in this case what you are essentially doing is you are using someone else's infrastructure so you are using in is infrastructure as a service so are using the infrastructure and paying for it so you are taking infrastructure as a service but you are still buying and picking your own vegetables and cooking it yourself so you are cre creating your own platform and of course cooking let's say now you are a uh, you are a person who just wants to cook your own stuff you don't bother about picking vegetables you don't you, even you don't have time for it as well so now you tell the hotel staff to buy vegetables from the list provided by you in this case you are using someone else's infrastructure and you are using someone else's service to get the platform so in this time you are using platform as a service when you are using pass infrastructure as a service comes by default you don't have to ask for it separately i mean if you do not have kitchen utensils you cannot cook a pizza just using the raw vegetables right and then finally you have restaurant you can go to a restaurant go to a uh, pizza shop order pizza and buy uh, yourself as i said food as a service now let's talk a little technical now suppose you are creating a product or a mobile app and you will use java to create the app let's see what things you need first of all infrastructure you need server database storage network etc and what platform you need you need operating system java virtual machine java some id like eclipse etc then we'll cook in our case we'll code then create your final product and the product would be end used by the end users now if you see here you can follow the exact same process which you, which was used in case of pizza you can choose to use infrastructure as a service and create your own platform like install your operating system basically install your jvm then install java then install ide then code and create your product and use this one as a service get it from someone else and pay for it right or you can use platform as a service so in this case os jvm java id operating system version everything will be pre installed you don't bother about those things you just code and get your own product so in this case you are using platform as a service now for the end users they don't care how this product was made they just want to use it they don't know whether it is being written in java or you are using eclipse or something else what database you are using what server you are using they don't care about it at all they are just using the using this product so for the users it is software as a service right now in infrastructure as a service aws microsoft azure google cloud etc mainly deal with infrastructure as a service they also have, have huge platform as a service uh, base as well we'll discuss them in due times let's see how the service models fan out for typical enterprise data center